including a low lying placenta, placenta previa, multiple pregnancy because a great proportion of these have filamentous insertion, multi-lobe placenta and filamentous insertion. And among filamentous insertion, one of percent of single term pregnancy have that, but 10% of multifetal pregnancy have that. And actually, it's quite common as you're looking at the membrane between twins when you put a flash of color to see a vessel following the membrane. 2% of filamentous insertion apparently seems to be associated with visa previa, so that's a big number. And here we have some example in which we have the cervix and we have some material in front of it. We have a placenta that is just going to the edge of the cervix over here too. There are other conditions like placenta membrane membranacea, which is not commonly diagnosed, but that is also associated with visa previa. In vitro fertilization, one in 300 in vitro fertilization is associated with the visa previa. And then, since vaginal bleeding is the common endpoint by which many of these present, you should consider that any patient has a visa that has a vaginal bleeding could possibly have a visa previa. Now, the sonographic finding, you can look at it through abdominal ultrasound or through a transvaginal ultrasound. And here we have the placenta. This happens to be a case of uh, placenta membrane assaya that was covering essentially the entire uterus. And then we have the cervix over here. And in front of the us, then we have the visa previa. And by far, the exam is a lot easier to recognize when doing color doctor. So in grayscale, what you see from time to time are those little echoes in front of the cervix. This is an off line, an off uh, section of sagittal section because they're not necessarily in front of the length of the endocervical canal, they may be on the side of it. And so those are a bit harder and trickier to recognize. And I think this is a very difficult diagnosis to place because you may over pull, may, you may under pull just on grayscale. But when you put a flash of color, then the diagnosis becomes absolutely obvious and unquestionable. So, oops, sorry for that one. Um, so that's probably the easiest thing to do. Here's another example. We have a placenta that is just covering the inner os. We have the endocervical canal over here. The inner os goes over here. And on grayscale, nothing particularly visible. But when you put car, there's clearly a vessel at this level. Another example here, we have a placenta that is a few centimeters, probably 1.8 centimeter away from the inner os. Nothing particularly visible. You may have taken this image to look at the cervical length and you feel confident that you have done all the exam and then you do a flash of color and all of a sudden, bang, we have a baby that has a visa previa and the whole management is probably quite different for this baby. <laughs> With car doctor, it's quite obvious and I don't think there's any question that car doctor is the modality we should be using. Here's another example where you can see a vessel crossing right in front and if you have any question, you can do a pulse wave to see whether this is a fetal or maternal vessel and here we can see a field tracing, and what is the heart rate on this baby? Who says it is 100? Who says it is 150? Who says it's 180? Come on guys, you, you don't need to have the ultrasound machine to tell you the frequency of a heartbeat, huh? Here you just find that there are two tick marks, and if you have two tick marks, this is 150 beats per minute. This is an important thing, you don't have to count on the machine to be able to get all this calculation back in, in, in memory. Here's another example with the Vesa Previa, quite visible in a quite chubby Tennessean. Uh, so don't use the excuse that my patients are too fat and I can't see that. Uh, this is quite visible even in patients that are quite my size. Here's a little video clip of something and you see the placenta in the back over here. The endocervical canal is over here. There's strictly nothing visible at this level. And then we're going to put some color doppler and then power doppler and you can see that there's clearly an artery that is pulsating right in front of it. So that is an unquestionable baby that has a visa previa and that baby has to be managed in a different way than if that was just a marginal placenta previa. Now, 3D has been used and some people have been successful. I, I think this makes some very pretty images, but I don't, uh, what I would like to see is the, the cervix and the, cer the uh, vessel in front of it, and I've not re been really able to do that yet. So I think it may be a matter of training, but maybe it's not necessary and just 2D is sufficient. The lamentous insertion are babies that have a long length of uh, 
vessels that are away from the placenta. This is a case from Fernando Heredia from Chile. And you see here an example in which you have the cord, which on one image is close to the placenta and on the other image is further away. What happens is we have a short filamentous insertion that cross over the cervix, and here the cord has been falling back towards the placenta, and here is further away. So just don't be fooled by the fact that we have a cord that is over there. This is a filamentous insertion, a filamentous insertion that is in front of the cervix, high risk for a vasa previa. Multilobe placenta, here is an example where you have an anterior lobe, a posterior lobe, and a visa previa in between the two. And this uh, is something that's also something to think about because these lobes may not be strictly in front and in the back. <coughs> you have one that is in the back and one that is on the side of the uterus, so you have to actually actively seek for this. This is a scan from one of my friends, Jill Python, uh, who is a sonographer in Minnesota. And here we have one anterior lobe, the posterior lobe, the cord insertion that is very much close to the midline between the two, uh, between the